Hello, my name is Puru Jena, and I'm a professor of physics at Virginia Commonwealth University. This short video is to introduce the perspective I recently published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters, Super Halogens, a Bridge Between Complex Metal Hydrides and Lithium Ion Batteries. The motivation behind this paper is to show the lessons learned in one field of material science can be applied to expedite material discovery in another. If the underlying bridge between two seemingly different fields can be identified. For example, at the outset, superhalogens, complex metal hydrides, and lithium ion batteries do not appear to have anything in common. I will demonstrate briefly through this video that they indeed have something in common. The building blocks of both complex metal hydrides and lithium ion batteries are superhalogens. The research in these two areas is important as they are both relevant for renewable energies. Complex metal hydrides can store copious amount of hydrogen, which is essential in a hydrogen economy. Lithium ion batteries, on the other hand, store electrochemical energy and are important for a wide range of applications. Let me begin by giving a brief description of superhalogens. I will follow this by describing some of the challenges and limitations in complex metal hydrides and lithium ion batteries. And so, how superhalogens can provide an answer to these challenges. In the early 80s, Gutsev and Boldirev coined the word superhalogens to describe a class of molecules composed of a metal atom at the core surrounded by halogen atoms. When the number of these halogens exceeds the maximal valence of the metal atom, their electron affinity becomes larger than those of halogens. Considerable amount of work in the past decade has expanded the list of superhalogens, and they can now be formed without a single metal or halogen atom. A new class of hyperhalogens was also discovered which, whose electron affinities are even larger than those of superhalogens they are composed of. Complex metal hydrides are potential candidates for storing hydrogen, which is essential for the success of a hydrogen economy. With more than 75% of the oil that goes to meet the transportation needs, finding an alternate fuel that is clean and abundant is essential for a sustainable energy. However, complex metal hydrides have challenges to overcome. In addition to their poor thermodynamics, during dehydrogenation, these materials exhibit intermediate phases which make them irreversible. Understanding why these intermediate phases form and finding ways to circumvent them are therefore important. In addition, some of these metal borohydrides such as aluminum borohydride is highly volatile and pyrophoric. Finding ways to make them safer is also important. The intermediate phases that are often seen contain B3H8 and B12H12 anions. A close examination reveals that like BH4, B3H8 and B12H12 are superhalogens and because of their large electron affinities form strongly bound compounds when interacting with metal cations. Similarly, a strategy to make aluminum borohydride safer can benefit from our understanding of super and hyperhalogens. For example, normal salts are made when metal cations interact with a halogen and a super salt can form 
by interacting superhalogen anions with a metal cation and a hypersalt can be formed by interacting metal cation with a hyperhalogen anion. For example, by adding a BH4 moiety to aluminum borohydride, one can make a hyperhalogen aluminum BH4 4 anion. When this is combined with a metal cation such as potassium, a hypersalt potassium aluminum borohydride can be formed. Recent successful synthesis of potassium aluminum borohydride shows that it is not only a solid at ambient conditions, but also it is much safer than its parent compound aluminum borohydride. Let me show you how superhalogens can play a role in the design of environmentally friendly lithium ion batteries. The lithium ion battery is composed of three components, the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. Most of the electrolytes provides the lithium ions the shuttle between the anode and the cathode. Most of the electrolytes currently used contain halogens which are toxic and there is a need for halogen free electrolytes. A closer examination of the currently used electrolytes shows that they are all superhalogens. As mentioned before, considerable research on superhalogens in the past decade has shown that they can be created without using a single halogen. One wonders if some of this can be used as effective halogen free electrolytes. For this, they have to satisfy three main criteria. The anions have to be large, their binding energy with lithium ion and affinity towards water have to be low. Computations of the lithium cation binding energy and the binding energy of the corresponding salt to water shows that lithium CB11H12, lithium carborane, has the potential to be an effective halogen free electrolyte. The illustration that I just gave shows that the two seemingly disparate fields such as complex metal hydrides useful for storing hydrogen and lithium ion batteries for storing electrochemical energy are intimately linked by their negative ion constituents, namely superhalogens. Now a word about the impact of this study. First, it demonstrates that knowledge gained in one area of material science can be used to further materials discovery in another. Secondly, it can also have an impact on other emerging areas. For example, complex metal hydrides containing lithium and sodium ions can be used as electrolytes in metal ion batteries. The ability to synthesize hypersols that are composed of two metal cations, such as in potassium aluminum borohydride, can be extended to a larger class of materials. Recently, it has been demonstrated that merging the concepts of molecular chemistry with ceramic host lattices can lead to the design and synthesis of an unusual class of complex hydride perovskite materials. Note that the traditional perovskites are metal oxides with composition ABO3, where A and B are metal cations. The lightest element, hydrogen, is rarely encountered in oxide perovskites. Yet, the ability to synthesize new complex hydride perovskite type materials by using BH4 anion instead of oxygen opens the door to a new class of perovskites for applications in ferroelectrics and solar cells. This work is a result of collaboration between theorists and experimentalists 
and demonstrates the importance of synergy between the two to accelerate focused discovery of materials. Equally important, the work I described lies at the interface of physics, chemistry, and material science. Hence, a multidisciplinary approach can help in the design and synthesis of materials for energy applications. Much of our recent works have been published in Journal of Physical Chemistry and Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. I am very appreciative of the editors of Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters for asking me to write this perspective as well as two others that I have written in the past. I hope this will encourage researchers to think out of the box to advance our understanding of materials through multidisciplinary approach and synergy between theory and experiment. Thank you for watching.